Okay, so I guess we're about um, out of time for today. Um, one other thing I would recommend, besides going back and redoing problems in the second language book, um, obviously you've got a lot of uh, recommended homework problems from the textbook that you've been assigned, right? Now, unfortunately, oftentimes those are kind of a mix of uh, bread and butter, very important problems, and also some problems that are maybe kind of subtle in advance that you want to put off. The, the, the questions in the, the textbook that I think are most useful is, have you noticed that there's oftentimes problems that are like A through J, where they just give you a whole bunch of variations mm -hmm. on the same mechanism. They just keep giving you different reagents. That's like our yeah. whole problem set, so we right. get like seven or eight of those. That's right. Those are, the, those are the parts of the problem set that are most useful to do and keep redoing over and over. That, that's the hard part of organic chemistry. We, we did some SN2 today and some E2, but the problem is there's lots of little pesky variations that can come up mm -hmm. every single time, and unless you've done lots of practice problems, you haven't been exposed to all those variations. So um, you want to find those kind of A through J problems in the textbook that have lots of variations on the same idea and just keep doing those over and over until they're easy for you because those should be easy problems for you. And the good thing is you have fully worked out solutions to all of those in your solutions manual, right? You guys both brought the solutions manual to the textbook and that, only, that not, only, not only gives you the answer but it also generally explains the thought process for those problems too. So you want to take your time and really think through the thought process there. Remember that um, one thing to keep in mind is the organic chemistry tests are designed to give you things you haven't seen before. You can expect to see things on the test you haven't seen before, and the way you're supposed to deal with that is by asking what pattern they fall into. So when you're doing the practice problems, it's not enough to focus on the details of the problem. You have to keep asking, what's the general moral of this problem, or what's the pattern that this is exemplifying? Um, and that way, when you see a similar pattern on the test, you can recognize it even if the problem doesn't look exactly the same uh, as the one uh, that you've seen before. So yeah, you should need to recognize that the class is getting pretty challenging now because um, it's not enough to learn the basic ideas. There really are lots of little minor variations on each idea, and it takes a lot of practice to, to really expose yourself. Well, I feel like too about like the solvents and stuff because mm -hmm. I've been going to the SLC. They've been providing a right. lot of things, and the other thing I don't like about it is they're really big on just memorizing like mm -hmm. seven or eight reactions, and I feel like that like that doesn't help me just to like memorize because then I don't understand yeah because then I do the problem sets and I'm like wait this doesn't apply like yeah so. um yeah so um that, that's a good resource to take advantage of but you're right there are some things in organic chemistry that you have to memorize but usually you should be memorizing and learning the reason if you look at the handout again it has all the facts and also the reason for them as much as I can fit it on the page basically and the second language book tends to do that as well it gives the, the pattern and the reason it's very important well, see, to you, like, you can think backwards and think right. like okay this reaction needs to have this part because of like, thing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Also, something else you have to be a little bit cautious with with the, uh, with the Student Learning Center is every instructor has slightly different emphases and things they cover in an organic chemistry class. And the people that are working there may not know exactly what your instructor is focusing on. I don't know how tied in they are to him. So they may occasionally go over things that he's not putting a big emphasis on. It's, it's, uh, so again, the best clue is starting to look at the, the sample exams uh, to see the kinds of things that they've been focusing on in the past. And obviously the homework problems he assigns you um, to know um, what the things are that your instructor thinks are important.